Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the new screensavers is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. A 3D scan of your face, an IoT home tour, and a $100 toy ball. Live from the Twit Studios in Petaluma, California, it's the new screensavers. <laughs> Recorded on July 7th, 2018. Leo Laporte here. Alex Lindsay. Look at it, Alex Lindsay. And thank you to Mark. Mark and Emily are visiting us. They're from Day uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nice to see you. Good job, Mark. Mark says this is his dream come true. Emily says it's her worst nightmare. And, <laughs> and they're, it's amazing how one experience she could still have loves them. completely different. No, I'm just teasing him. Thank you for uh, doing our show open. Hello, Alex. Hi. Uh, you haven't done this show a whole lot of times. I, this is my third I time. love it when you yeah, do it. I love being on. I, I'm, I'm local, you know. When <laughs> <laughs> You are all over the, all over the world. I mean, yeah. make, make your domicile nearby, <laughs> but you are all over the world. Uh, Alex, of course, a regular on Mac Break Weekly. And uh, one of the, we were just looking at some early twits, one of the earliest twit participants. You helped us do video back in like, We should do video. We should do video. And then Leo said, yes. And I was like... I got to figure I don't it out. Know how to do it yeah, exactly? exactly. I don't know quite <laughs> how to do this yet. And, and I, but I had a couple days. And you've made a business, quite a good business, yeah. out of that, which is really great. Uh, I quickly tired of video, <laughs> and we stopped. and now look at you. Yeah, and then we set up a studio. But uh, you, every time you're here, you bring us new toys, video toys, production toys. So we're going to talk some about that. In fact, uh, I think you're going to show us some more. Three, you saw, uh, when we were on MacBook Weekly, you did a 3D scan of my face. I did, and and you know the last time I was on on the new screensavers, I we were talking about how to capture locations, so how to cap you know with lidar and so on and so forth. Oh, I that's thought, right, yeah, yeah. So I thought to make we make it a little more personal today. So what we're going to do is talk about capturing our face, uh, capturing our whole body uh, with what we call photogrammetry. So you can do what? Well, you, you're you're. Uh, we're going to be more interested in having ourselves in the virtual world as we oh, move forward. I so, so I could have a, a Leo body in in a you know exactly second second life or something. Not like something that. you need today, but something you might want to be yeah. thinking about for the next couple of years. We can make some improvements if that's all right. <laughs> Apple is selling a ball, a one hundred dollar ball. They've got the exclusive on the Play Impossible game ball. Is this worth a hundred bucks for a ball you could buy for fifty cents? Oh, but there's some special stuff inside. Alex and I will, will play. Actually, we were having so much fun, we didn't want to stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Playing. We almost missed, this, <laughs> almost missed the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, Megan Maroney will be uh, showing us some of her favorite smart devices in her IoT crib. And if you're hitting the road this summer, Jason Howell has some. He's a, he loves traveling. He's a camper. He's got some tech travel tips, including a power pack you could club a bear with. <laughs> um, we'll also answer some of your uh, questions around video production, video collaboration tools, must-have apps, this educational resources. I, I got, this is I got a couple opinions. I don't know if they're really answers. He knows but, it all. Did you see my uh, new toy? This is a so IBM cute. keyboard. So this, in 1990, this was state-of-the-art. This thing weighs about like four or five pounds. It's really heavy. 104 key, classic IBM keyboard, buckling spring. I want to type so you can hear how a buckling clack. So this, uh, what I didn't know, I always knew the name Buckling Spring, and we've been talking about keyboards like this for years. Uh, you know, uh, Northgate, or was it Omnigate, made some, and then now there's the, the Cherry keys and all Dos, this. Dos but key. I don't think any, every keyboard nowadays has a switch with a rubber dome, mm -hmm. and sometimes louder, sometimes softer. This is called a Buckling Spring keyboard. It literally has a spring... Like a regular spring in it. And you know what happens if, with a spring? If you compress it too far, it buckles. It's, it, it, it's like a defect. It, throw, it shoots its hip out. Well, this is a switch that when you press it, it buckles the, the spring out. It hits the switch, and that's the key. So it gives you a really nice, solid, and loud. Can you hear that? That I feel like this is. you still hear this keyboard mostly at airlines when you're saying... I've missed my flight. Well, let me see. I might be able to get you on through Dallas. <laughs> and you hear that. 
I think they'd leave sound. it there just to make make you feel like they're working. Otherwise, they, they'd be like, I don't know if he's really doing anything they're, back yeah, there. Yeah, they're really just doing they're, this. Right? There'd probably be a lot more upset passengers if they did it with an like, iPad. They'd be like, I don't <laughs> I don't really know. If um, yeah, it doesn't no feel like flights, they're working. No flights, sorry. When I, when I type, I have a kind of a similar keyboard uh, at home, and when I type on it, I feel like I'm working so much harder. So this, you know. believe it or not, this cost me $200. <laughs> the guy, and in fact, it's uh, he's at clickykeyboards.com, and they say, quickly get these because it's harder and harder to find these. This was right. made in 1990. It's, it's older than some of our studio audience. And uh, he takes it, he cleans it. In this case, it had plastic rivets. He removed those, put M2 screws in to make it more solid. It's got a big, heavy plate in the back. That's one of the things that makes it heavy, but also makes it solid. This is the classic white label M. And uh, I'm, it's pretty cool. There's only one defect that I can see. And I guess somebody pressed the left arrow so much they wore out the key. And so it has a replacement key on it. But otherwise, this is pristine. I'm very excited. I can't wait. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It doesn't have a Windows key or a Mac command key, so I'll have to do some key mapping to make it functional. But I just thought I'd show you my new toy. <laughs> there you go. Clicky it's keyboards. wonderful. Yeah, he, he, he does this himself. It's kind of neat. Um, top stories. Twitter in the month of July. No, I guess we're in the month. In the month of June killed 70 million troll and spam and bot accounts. They're doing about 1 million a day right now. This well, is everybody's incredible. tightening up. Did, did it affect you very much? I uh, No, I don't think so. That's the interesting thing. I, I guess some people would be heavily, if you were followed by a lot of bots, right. you'd be affected. I lost a few hundred, I was looking at my stats, a few hundred followers this month. I didn't Not lose. more than normal. Mine didn't change at all. I. I wonder if it's the kind of people who who are like paying for you know like the services that said hey yeah. we can give you a hundred thousand followers well, or two hundred thousand followers. You'd be hurt followers. Bad, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you probably that's probably yeah. people that are taking a taking a big hit. Do you notice uh, that it's a more civil place or a nicer place than it was before? Does it seem better? It doesn't seem that way to me. It seems pretty much the same. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's <laughs> it's still an yeah. outrage factory. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know it, what they say. You know, they say that that anger leads to hate. You know, yeah. or fear leads to anger, fear anger leads, leads to hate, hate leads to Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think Yoda said that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Netflix, uh, speaking of hate, apparently a lot of the reviews of Netflix shows were filled with junk. So they're just, <laughs> this is every site eventually does this. They're removing online reviews in August. You'll no longer be able to post written views as the end of this month, and then all you'll get is a thumbs up and thumbs down. I didn't even know, I'll be honest, that you could you could do reviews. I've never seen reviews. I think functionally the problem is is that is that it made sense when Netflix was primarily sending you things and you were going to a web page, but now you never really have a place that you really I don't interact. Look at the I don't. Yeah. You, you're watching it on your TV from right. your you know, and so the people that what that means is a very small percentage of the people are doing all the reviews. The weirdos. It's not. It's yeah. It's not a. Right. It's not really representative of the viewers anymore. Makes perfect so. sense. Uh, this is a bad bug, and I don't know how this happened. I can't even imagine how it happened. But apparently some Samsung phones were spontaneously sending your pictures to random contacts without any warning, <laughs> without any notice. <laughs> as a note, as a note, if you're thinking about the, the, the importance of this, I would rather have my phone spontaneously combust. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I would, I would, you know, you don't get to go. pick which pictures go to whom. Oh, I can only no. imagine the nightmare. Um, mm. The forums, according to a, a Samsung spokesperson, they're aware of the reports, that technical teams are looking into it. The forums indicate that it's Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus devices. I have an S9 Plus. I better go check to see if it's been sending out. Because you could get in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. In fact, isn't that a rude thing to do? Don't you ever, it's ever happened to you, you give your phone to somebody, you say, oh, let me show you pictures of my kids. And you show, and you pull up the picture of your kid, and then they start swiping. Have you ever seen that? And you got to grab the thing quick, go, no! <laughs> See, that's not my kid. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know why that's, uh, never mind. Well, uh, oh, God, let's take that right off. Um, so this is worse. This is without even, and there's no recall. There's no, it's done. Imagine it, sending your boss pictures. <sighs> All right, let's talk about 3D scanning. You brought some um, software. The last time we did this on MacBreak Weekly, you used a iPhone app, and you used the iPhone yep. 10's <clears throat> depth sensor to scan my face. And it wasn't. It was in beta back then, 
and now it is in uh, it is in uh, it's out. It's you out. Can get it? You can get it. It's called Bellus 3D. B E L U S. Uh, yep. I'm and, getting uh, it right now. And what you can do here, I'll, I'll uh, you can see. Yeah, those are the some of the models generated from it. So if I get my uh, in the right position. So you you're going to, you're gonna, yeah, it's modeling your face. So what I do is I get my face kind of into that space here and I click on it and it's going to tell me to look. I just go. Okay, that's not it. That's just a, just to describe how to do it. Can, it now is this, it's not on the app store. It should be. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. Maybe it's only showing up for me because I'm still in the beta. <laughs> I thought be. I thought it, I went to the app store and it was there. Okay. Before I had to use the you know the side but loader. But the plan is so to this make is this a, available. <clears throat> this all white is a is a bug in I think twelve. But you did get but, it captured. Now what you do is you do that and then you e you email it to yourself and you're using yeah. a different. Is this a Bellas program? No, this is Cinema 4D. So That's I'm just a using standard Cinema, 3D rendering. Standard, so I just literally just open this Holy up in cow. Cinema 4D. So that is, uh, you know, that is the. Uh, that's the rendered version. Yeah, that's the rendered version. You can see if I jump out of it, but if I, oops, I accidentally copied it there. Um, but you can see I can move it around. There's like a shell. I'm a shell of myself. Um, but that is a very accurate 3D model. Could you get uh, the done, back of your head too? I mean, yeah, this app is is kind of a, a start if you wanted to have a front avatar. Um, you can. There's definitely other ways to get the back of your head, but not with this app yet. So um, let me see what the on the flattened. Oh, the flattened texture map? Yeah, so yeah. what it does is it generates a texture that is your... Uh, the texture is kind of a... Oops. <laughs> so if you, wanted to put, if you wanted to put me on a mug, this is... The, oh, you could just wrap mug, it right around my his mug cylinder. on a mug. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you could, uh, you could simply print that out, which is kind of funny. You know, so. I wonder if you could use this to full face ID, because that's... I don't pretty think realistic. So. No? I, think, I think you'd have trouble because Face ID is looking for warmth. It's, it's and, do, and it's also doing depth. Yeah. There's, this is 2D. It's flat. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. it would have. You might be able to print something that then that then you figured out some way to get the right. I mean, it, it, you'd it, have to 3D print something. Yeah. But I think that a lot of times, again, this is the kind of thing that, especially things that are an app grabbing avatars, are going to be really fun. If you think about the me emoji, what a, this is a step away from being able to scan yourself and have yourself right. actually truly a me emoji. You know, and so um, now it looks like they also sell a camera. There's an, that's for the Android. Okay. So because Android and Windows doesn't they don't have the depth sensor, so you can do it on the iPhone, much cheaper. It's on the Android, it's like five hundred bucks, five hundred dollar, and that's basically a Connect. I mean, that's essentially doing what a Connect does right. um, there. So now you, they do say it's now out. Bellows yeah. 3D one word. Oh yeah, there it is. Face app. Okay, good. I'm gonna get this. You can download it for free and play with it. You just can't export the model. Uh, without paying something like eight dollars a month or twenty four dollars a year or something like that, but you can, uh, but this is but their you can business. download it and play with it. You should you should download it and play with it. If you have oh, an I iPhone ten, this is awesome. It's uh, it does require the sensing in iPhone ten, or you'd have to buy some hardware. Yeah, yep. So uh, again, this is something that I think that it's worth playing with now, and there's lots of fun things that you could do with it. Um, you can print. Uh, one thing I haven't gotten around to is printing a mask. You know, once I have that data. Um, I can, you know, my, my thought is you could cut it out and print and not a me, I'd probably do it. Now, do I turn my head? What do yeah, I do? It, you hit start. There you go. And then it'll give you a guide. Oh, there you go. Now it'll just say, look up, look up at your camera and then turn slowly as far as you can, as far as your neck will stretch. Oh. There you go. Well, you shouldn't make faces though. So now I'm going to be sneering out of the left hand side of my <laughs> face. And we'll see if so we'll see if I you, get the you, white one. Are you beta as well? No. Oh. No, but see, no, they're having this something. problem. There's some kind of there's got, some kind of rendering it got issue. Got something. It, it actually captures it. Um, there's a rendering issue that I did after I did the update, so I don't know what. Yeah. I'm not sure what what what's causing that at the moment. Huh. But um. Okay. Anyway, but it's a uh, it's, it, it is capturing the texture map. That's really cool. It's a recent recent little issue that we we started having there. So, yeah. but um, but you can you'll get this texture map out. You can you could. Hook it up to your 3D printer, print your head, you know, if you wanted to, if you really felt like you needed that. Um, so anyway, so that's, a, that's, that's getting the, the, the face. Um, the, <laughs> the, the next step, of course, is how do you get the whole body? So, and the reason you might want the whole body is you might want to have a, um, again, I think that when we talk about VR and AR, having 
actual characters, actual people is going to be important, whether it's yourself or uh, actors uh, that you want to bring into the scene. And this would be useful for education. Imagine you know, re recreating a Civil War scene or in, in the case that we're, we're experimenting with, a Cambodian scene. Um, and uh, you want to get the actual people rather than modeling them. So what we did is I have some friends, uh, Pixel Gun uh, 3D, that, um, or Pixel Gun, that basically they are down in San Rafael. They've got this, um, an RV that Whoa. has 146 this cameras. Is, this yeah, is so in this an RV. Pixel Gun Studios, yep. Every and one of those dots is a camera. Every one, no, no. Those oh, dots those are, are, are tracking cameras. markers. Those are markers oh. so that it just knows, it, it uses that to calibrate where all the cameras are. So got there's it. 146 cameras that are getting wides, close-ups, uh, you know, and, and those, those dots basically are a little, uh, they're actually a 10-bit code that tells you this is marker number or whatever. That way, got when it. the, when the program, in this case, uh, Photoscan, does its calibration, it knows exactly what it's looking at, because otherwise it's a lot of white. So here's an actor. So here's an actor doing the scan. Uh, now, does it, wow. Does it, ma those look like fancy, expensive DSLR cameras. They, they're they not super expensive DSLRs, but they are a, a, lot lot of, DSLRs. a lot of DSLRs. I mean, that's still yeah. $100,000 of cameras, at least, wow. or $200,000 of cameras. And so... Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of cameras. They um, don't need to be at waist level, though. That's a, it looks like it's well, at the top of the head and then they're below a little, him. They're all the way around. So you'll, you'll look at them. They're all the way up and down, yeah. all the way around him. And uh, But the, the hard part is is that because they're taking him instantly, he can do things like this where he can he might be moving a little bit. Um, you know, you it freezes him. It freezes him yeah. in that space. And so it's a great... Um, and this is what, when you watch the games, when you watch some of the, the, the real-time games, the sports games, this is exactly the kind of studio that's used. This is a capture. Cambodian dancer doing uh, Cambodian positions. Yeah. positions. We're, we're doing some experimentation. I was in Cambodia last year for a couple of weeks and decided I wanted to try to launch a project. 146 um, cameras. Uh, around wow. Angkor Wat. So, we, um, wow. so anyway, so the... Uh, now, what, again, you're going to get a 3D model... Right. Um, that you would do what with? Can, well, you, so, can you animate it? Yeah, so the, what we're going to do next is take take our uh, subjects and we're going to put uh, bones in, 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 basically attach animation tools underneath and, and attach the, the mesh that we create to those bones, uh, those animation tools. Then we can now do motion capture and have them walking around and doing, possibly even doing would Cambodian dances. Would you use the dances. same camera array to do the motion as well? Or no, is that that's a motion capture. Okay. Maybe the next time I come, we'll... we'll Mocap's we'll another, a third thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, okay. Um, but, but we'll, maybe the next time we'll, we'll show a little bit of all of this together. But, um, but the mocap is then, can be applied once we put the, uh, the bones inside of the character and attach the meshes to the bones. Then we take the motion capture and drive the bones, which drives the mesh. And, and then we render it out into the scene. So, it's, so um, we that's, talked this is just the beginning. At the beginning of the show where right. you might want an image of yourself for a virtual world, like a yep. second life kind of world. Is what you get with this 146 camera array sufficient for that? Oh, it's way more than what you need. Okay. So it's, this but is it, a... But you'd have to add expressions and motions to it. Um, this is, yeah, you would, you would need to add a lot more detail to it. So basically, once we have the base... And here's oh, the here's the, here's the 3D that. model, and and this is if I hit render, it'll it'll render it out here. And it looks, see by it. the way, as soon as you render it, much more detail yeah. in there. So there's there's the model there, um, it's, but it's but you kind can, of uncannily realistic. Yeah, and so you can see that wow. it's you know, and that's the kind of thing that's hard to model is is really getting something that is, you know, that that really captures all the little wrinkles and the and the sense of it. And this is a uncleaned. I mean, the model hasn't been really cleaned up yet. It's just a really rough scan so but that would take a long time to right. to uh to create a 3d model that accurate now if you think about what what's going to happen here with these kinds of characters is uh imagine being able to go to a location maybe historical cambodia or or somewhere else and be able to look down and see people walking and, and so on and so forth in ar or have your vr goggles on and feel like you're there right those are the kind of things that are going to be possible in the next Year. The other thing I've seen, I've seen this twice now, once in New York, uh, and, uh, and I just saw one somewhere, I think L.A., there are booths, I think these will be in malls at some point too, where they have arrays like this, and then for 100 bucks they print a 3D model of you, not big, but the, you know, a 10 inch tall 3D model of you. Yeah. And, and you could do that with this as well. Oh, with a, with with either Bellas for small like little bits of it, right. uh, or with with uh, Pixel Gun, the type of thing that Pixel Gun Studios does. Uh, you could absolutely. Um, they have prints of all kinds of some of the some of the celebrities and so on right. and so forth. They actually made uh, chocolates. There's there's some of the uh, 
Uh, oh, there's wow. some of the, the the prints. Look at that. There's Snoop, um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's a place in New York called Gulliver's Gate, which I highly recommend down in Times Square. It's tiny little models of the world, and they were made all over uh, the world. But there's people in these, and if you go to Gulliver's Gate, you can become a person. Oh, that's funny. In these models, they have an array that takes the picture of you. They print it out. And then see these little people. <laughs> They're all people who came. They're people who visited. Yeah, That's it's not great. all of them, but they, but as time goes by, the more and more of them will be little people, real people. And it really is, you know, that is a the, you know, Pixel Gun has gotten to a point where they've really got it refined down to a science. But it is something that is just a collection of cameras at this point. Um, there's a program called PhotoScan that you can that you can actually download if you want to play with it. It's free to download, yeah. and you can play with the demo as long as you want. You just can't save. You know what we have to do sometime? Because I remember, well, it's been now almost 20 years ago, you came to the screensavers and you drew dots on my face. We should get a montage, as this has evolved over 20 years, <laughs> yeah. from the time that you had it by hand. You draw yeah. dots on my face, and then by hand, take pictures oh, all man. around me. That was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. To this. It's yeah, much, much more accurate, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, coming up in just a bit, we're going to play a little bit with this. We're going to test our hand-eye coordination, see if a $100 toy, Apple only sells it, requires an iPhone or an iPad, is, is worth the money. But first, uh, Megan Maroney with some IoT devices. She's using at home right now. Welcome to the inside of my smart home. This is the Schlage Smart Lock, which happens to be the only device I have that works with HomeKit. So I could lock it like this, boring, or I could do this, hey, lock the door. I'm on it, your front door is locked. Or I could use the Home app on my watch. Pretty cool. Now we have these two cute little neighbors here, the Neato Smart Vacuum and the Yunmai Smart Scale. They're friends. <laughs> Ask Neato to stop cleaning. Okay, well, stop you then. Uh, did I show you this camera that was recording you on the outside? This is the Yi camera, and it will follow, if it sees motion, it will follow you around, see? It's like one of those paintings where the eyes follow you around, except the eyes are really following you around. And sending the video up into the cloud. This is one of the many brains of my smart home, the Echo Show, one of my favorite devices because it has a screen. And I can use it to make video calls with anyone I want or to drop in on Jerry's office in Twit to find out what Jerry and Anthony are doing, which is always interesting. I'm not that innocent. Here's our Sony TV, which is an Android TV that we have hooked up to an Apple TV which can be confusing. <laughs> Works with the Android TV, so I could say, <laughs> turn on the TV. Sorry, something went wrong. So uh, here's the Apple TV if I wanted to use that. <laughs> turn on the TV, please. I love my Apple TV because I can- Sorry, something went wrong. <laughs> okay, we heard you the first time, thank you. I can't use voice with the Android TV, but I can with the Apple TV, so I could say, Open YouTube and watch the new screensavers. So, what device? There we go, and I can see our friend Flo on the new screensavers. <laughs> Stop. So, what device? If you ever feel like throwing your smart devices just out the window, just know I too have been there. There's nothing a little Plug, unplug, and plug back in will it solve. You're always still in control. Ah, oh, the HomePod. I really looked forward to this device, but the truth is she just sort of sits over here gathering dust. That was frightening. And I bet you're wondering how secure it is to have this device that unlocks my door right next to an open window. 
Well, let me show you. Say I was a criminal outside the window. Hey, <laughs> unlock the front door. I can't unlock secure accessories here. See, Apple's thought of everything. Uh, this is the Echo Plus. And the Plus means that it has a smart hub inside. Ideally, if you get this, you could just say, <laughs> find my smart devices. I couldn't find any new smart home devices. So yeah, that's, um, that's it. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go now. See you later. <laughs> hey, <laughs> lock the door. <laughs> You know, people might think, oh, gosh, having a Bluetooth lock, that's, that's insecure because maybe somebody could hack it or whatever. Because keys are so secure. Well, notice her front door has a big pane of glass yeah, on it. exactly. It's all just a suggestion. Don't come in here. It's keeping honest people honest. And yeah, and if you're a crook, you just a little hammer, a little silver hammer to the glass, and it's over anyway. Oh. All right, let's play. It's time to play with the impossible ball. This is a, uh, there's, they come in two colors. This is, uh, this is the purple one. There's also a green one. Apple has an exclusive on this. By the way, this is inflated. It even has a hole for a pin. So it's just like any uh, game ball. Well, not exactly, because it also has a, a holes on the other side that you charge it. And this is the interesting thing. This is the charging device. It has two AA batteries in it, and it will charge the ball all the way up to 100% in 20 seconds. And that tells me it's a super capacitor in here and that they are driving it very quickly. They say you can play with this ball for two hours on a 20 second charge. Uh, I've paired it to my uh, iPad here. Okay, let's go. And you can- Game you, ball LEO connected. Oh, I named it LEO, so I know it's already connected. And we can play some games. You wanna play a game with me? Let's do it. Shall we play a game? All right, there are a lot of different uh, games. Impossible Showdown. It has games for head-to-head -head play. Group Game Ball Fun. Divide into two teams and play silly challenges with your friends. Well, there's only two of us. Do you want to... Shall we try it? Sure. Okay, one, I have one ball. Divide if you get, into two teams. Okay, you're on one team. All right. I'm on another team. Teams take turns spinning the game ball to select a random challenge. <laughs> okay. The first team to win five challenges takes the game. Okay. All right. My team spin the game ball to start the wheel and pick a random challenge. You're going to be the red team, so go ahead, spin the wheel. And then see, notice it's got an accelerometer in it. Overhead Little, uh, tossing catch. Price is right thing going on here. Is the game, yes. Stand back to back with a partner. I'll pretend. Uh -oh. all right, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Toss the ball overhead and have your partner catch it. Oh, you ready? Hold on, I got to. Here. Oh. The most catches in 30 <laughs> seconds wins. Okay, ready? Okay, ready. Red team's turn to play. Red team, take the ball and shake to confirm that you are ready. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, I wish I had a six, real human voice five, instead of Siri, four, but I guess that's... 3, 2, Okay, one, now I have to catch it. Go. Oh, I caught it. <laughs> oh, this is party fun. Oh! Oh, it knows you dropped oh. it. That's pretty impressive. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. All right. Ah. <laughs> eh. Okay, we did it six times, and you get the idea. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. you just go like this. Let's just stop. Okay, so that's one game. Uh, there's there's exploratory science, too. And by the way, you get daily missions. Earn extra airtime with daily missions. Oh. Check daily for the newest one. Do you want to do a mission? Sure. When you complete them, your airtime grows. We get more airtime. Don't know what that means. 25 airtime, no streak bonus. Get to level three airtime. Total completed one mission. What are, oh, I guess we've already done a mission. Didn't even, we did it without knowing it. Let me, uh, let me, let's do some of the other things we have here. That was party time. I'm going to go back home. Uh, all games. This, there is a, a science. You want to do sport lab? Sure. All right. This is Toss your game ball to see key metrics. So this is kind of fun. We did this earlier. I'll skip. Select the metric you want to hear. So this is the metrics. You can measure. Four miles per hour. Speed, Three. RPM, airtime, height, or catch force. 13. Let's 14. try height. See how high you can throw. Height. 
It's hard. We have a... <laughs> 8.3 feet. Very nice, Alex. Uh, you want to try spit? Whoa. 2.1.7. Oh. I don't know. That was a little one. Let's try spin. spin. Alex is the master of this. Toss it higher. 673 rotations per 812. 694. 864. 816. Would you? Okay, 816 is the one to yeah. beat here. 864. 864. 95. Toss it higher. 252. 817. Whoa! <laughs> A good cautionary tale. 595. Oh, it's... 1,100. Whoa! Oh, that's because I tossed it a distance, though. 873. Oh, sorry. Toss it higher. <laughs> 1,396. 753. All right. You get, you get the idea. By the way, it didn't hurt when it hit me. It's a fairly soft ball. It's fairly uh, compact. There seem to be a lot of different things you can play here. Let me give you some stats before we go on. It's Bluetooth. That's how it pairs. Bluetooth 4. And somehow it just saw it immediately. Um, email is not configured. I guess I was trying to email the results to my mom. <laughs> 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 Mom, you'll never guess what Alex and I did today. <laughs> we threw the ball. Uh, you used AA batteries, the game ball capacitor, up to two hours, 200 recharges from a single set of AA's. That's pretty good. Charge time's 20 seconds, standby time six hours. It's a, uh, I don't know how you describe the size of that. It's, a, it's like a softball. It's a little bit bigger than a softball. Yeah. I have a, I'm guessing that they made it slightly different than everything else so it doesn't get like... Used as a softball yeah. because it would probably break it if you hit it really hard with a bat. Though I do want one that's like a baseball size. That'd be fun. That's true. Like a baseball one. Well, even not. Yeah, the problem is you'd hit it. But you want to play a to... water balloon toss game? Imagine your game ball is a water balloon. See how far you can toss it, but you must catch it softly. Oh. Okay. Each toss has to be longer it's than like the one eggs. before. Yeah. Yeah, it's like throwing eggs. Toss the game ball and catch it softly. All right. Ready? Okay. 630 milliseconds. 649. You need to toss it farther. Your total score is 1,279 okay, milliseconds. Okay, that's our high score. That's Let's do it again. That's a new high score. Here we okay. go. Start close. Okay. 472 milliseconds. 590. 767. 886. You need to toss it farther. We got to do a higher. Your total score is 2,717 milliseconds. Now, what do you think? That's you have kids score. that are the, the target for this. I can see them playing it. I don't know. I, I have a hard time. I, I can see them playing it for an afternoon and think it's really cool and then taking it out every time their friends showed up. Like, right. hey, look at the ball I got. I'm right. pull, pull up the iPad and do the thing. It's the same market that played the Merlin games. Remember with Simon with the yep. electronic thing? Or the, remember the Bop It? You probably don't remember mm -hmm. this. This was big when my kids were young, where you'd, it would tell you to do something and spin it, bop it. And yeah, yeah, remember you had, um, what was it, um, surgery? The uh, What was it called? Yeah, Operation. Operation. Yeah. yeah. So in, in the grand scheme of there are many games we can play on a Saturday afternoon with our friends. This would fit well into that. I'll take it home and see if Michael and his friends... My fear is that after about the age of 12, they're going to destroy it. Yes. They're going to see if we can break this thing. Yes. And I don't know how tough it is. It is expensive. That's the other negative. And it requires an iPhone or an iPad to play a game. And that's kind of silly that you have to have... A lot of kids have them. But a lot of kids have them. There's some fun things you can do with it. We didn't even come close to touching all the games. There's Skyscraper, Tice, ha Toss High, and Beat the Clock. There's uh, the uh, Hot Tater. You want to play a Hot Potatoes? We'll do one more game. Don't get caught holding the ball when the game randomly ends. Three, two, one, go. All right, we don't want to... Whoa, Hot Potato, Hot Potato, ah! Oh! The game I, don't, I don't know who's out. The next round. It was in the air when it exploded. Okay. Yeah. You jerk. The game ball to start the next round. <laughs> this is kind of fun. I could see. <laughs> oh! <laughs> ah! 
about to start. I can see how that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I have to say, I kind of like it. Uh, 100 bucks really is a stopping point. On the other hand, if you've got 100 bucks to blow, and or maybe you're just trying to get some, par like a birthday party. It'd be fun to have this for a birthday party, right? Just some fun activities. I love the way you charge this thing with this, this kind of clever, because then you don't have to have a USB port on the ball. I was worried about that. Right. These charging pins really are small and don't get in the way at all. This device, you know, you have to keep it. If you lose it, the ball. And I would like to see my, my kids play this more than Roblox. Right. Yeah, there you go. The impossible game ball. All right, let's play a, a game with one of our callers because it's time for Follow Me, a call for help. <clears throat> On the line right now for uh, our call for help, uh, it's Scott from Dayton, Ohio. I'm a little out of breath from the impossible ball. Hi, Scott from Dayton, Ohio. Hi, Leo. Hi, Alex. Scott, hey. do you have kids? You think they'd be interested in this? I don't have kids. Yeah. I think I could use it for martial arts training, though. Oh, that's interesting. You're a martial arts instructor. <laughs> yes. What do you, what, what, what martial art do you teach? Uh, I train in a traditional Korean martial art called uh, Tang Soo Do. It does kind of remind me of the ball that uh, Obi Wan Kenobi taught Luke. Yeah, if the you just force get the hover. If it would just float in space. How would, how would you think you might use this in, uh, in uh, instructing? I actually started in a very confined space when when I started. We we trained in a basement and we actually had balls hung from the ceiling instead of oh. heavy bags to work on targeting. Yeah, and this uh, and this is uh, because it's got an accelerometer and it's very sensitive to motion, but also be getting tapped and rotated. It's kind of cool. What can we do for you, Scott? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, as, as part of the martial arts instruction, uh, we've been starting to use video as an instructional tool. Um, it's really good when you're there with each other and you can take video and replay and, and comment on, on what you're doing and, and students make improvements very quickly. Um, as a student myself, I'm a little bit separated from my instructor. He lives about an hour and a half away from me. Um, and so we're starting to collaborate with an asynchronous video collaboration where I can take video and then send it to him. And what we want to be able to do is for him to be able to make comments on that video that are time based. So right now we've been playing around with it a little bit and it's kind of difficult because, you know, we can take video very easily. We can share it. There's all kinds of tools to do that. Um, but then you kind of have to say, well, at 45 seconds, you did this, right. or you need to look at this. And and that's kind of difficult to get on the same page. So I'm looking for a tool, uh, kind of like commenting in a document where the comment is attached to what you're looking at. So so kind of a time-based commenting system for video to start with. You know, we're, I'm gonna let you answer this because mm -hmm. this is your Alex's uh, Bailey work. But you know, would this, would this work for you? I think about how maybe a soccer commentator or a football commentator would take a video Telestrated, right? Right. And I think that would be, it seems to me that your instructor, if he could have the video on a screen and, and, and say, see right here, your kick needs to be straighter and actually draw a line, annotate it with a pen and maybe be able to slow it down, speed it up, scrub through it and make a second video that has all of that. Yeah, Does absolutely. that sound like something you'd want to do, Scott? Yeah, that, that sounds kind of perfect. And the easier, the better, because I'm, I'm kind of a nerd and, and I can handle a lot of the heavy lifting. But I, I kind of want to share this with other uh, instructors and, and students as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking the Surface Studio or any uh, Windows device that has a pen... And, and the, pen, the pen is useful, I think, that um, to get started. I mean, if you don't want to have any, any kind of hardware, um, there is another, uh, there's an app that we use in the, in the visual effects industry, in, in the ad industry, uh, online. I've actually, and my parents oh. have actually used it. When you do your, you do those commentaries. I, that's my own hardware. <laughs> I, that's very complicated. So Alex does something very similar. He'll look yep. at uh, TV, what, newsrooms and yep. stuff, and, and be snarky about it. And he'll, <laughs> he'll do it. Like I'm giving constructive criticism. You, you'll do exactly that, <laughs> yeah, though. You'll no, take I, a, a pen and you'll say, you see this? That's a terrible chroma key. Yeah, and so that that is a pretty custom-built okay. system that is, that I, that's not trivial to put together. Okay. And probably <laughs> so, not cheap either. Uh, no. Okay. No. But this one is. This one, this one actually is. Um, there's a, and what's interesting is the first Mac break that we ever did. Way back Remember when. back at Macworld? And yeah. And we, we ran around. And yeah. So uh, there was a guy that we worked with there, Emery Wells. Yeah. Remember Emery? I know Emery well. Emery created an app 
that is the perfect solution for what you what you need. And, so, and it's become kind of the standard within the ad community, visual effects, even people just doing edits. And it's called Frame.io. Frame.io. And uh, you can see it here on my on my laptop here. And this is my son actually getting uh, scanned at Pixel Guns. But I just grabbed a video so we, so we can show it. But what you can do is, if, and this is, I think it's free to start just doing basic ones. When you start adding larger teams, you have to start paying for it. But basically, you can scan through. You know, you can go here. You can just hit play if you want. And so you can kind of play here. Now, if you decide you want to draw on it, you just simply click this button. Oh, perfect. And now you can start to draw like this oh. here. See this? See his eyes are going this way or whatever. Now, when you did that, when you stopped and, um, and did that, if I hit send, it's actually, you see over here, it's actually time stamped that um, in the, uh, here. So now you can jump, you can literally click to where the, uh, you know, to where that is in the scene. So all the comments, you simply click on it and it jumps to that part of the video. Um, and if you want to draw on it, you can. You can put obviously more more text in there. Um, so those are, those are, this is a really inexpensive, easy to use, works, it's a web-based app, so it's gonna work uh, anywhere. You can actually have, you'll see up here, I have a little uh, icon, I'm, I'm not logged in at the moment, but you can actually have it, have a watch folder, so it just, you just throw stuff into the watch folder, it automatically puts it up into the group. You can invite a bunch of people to, to be part of this. Um, we were doing an edit for my father, and we actually, um, my, my dad and my mom actually used it and gave all their comments and circled things and everything else. So it's very easy to use um, and r relatively inexpensive. I think that... A any computer would be able to do this as long as you have a browser, right? Any browser. It works on every browser. It is super slick. Um, so I guess there's a start starter plan, $15 a month. But I think you can download it and there's some it's kind got of... Two week you can trial. test it for free, yeah. yeah. One project. I, I, you know, so you can do a couple things with it to, to try it out. Um, it is... Uh, it's super smooth. It works really well. Emery's got it. He comes from out of the uh, really the design world, so everything just works really well. I mean, this is the apple of feedback tools. And um, anyway, it's used a lot in our industry. Uh, it just came out a couple years ago and has really picked up speed. Um, you know, they had a big, uh, they raised a lot of money, so now can there's you, a lot of hardware behind it. The one thing I can imagine is, like for instance, Scott would do a kick and you'd like to see that whole kick you can't do you can't annotate a motion you can only annotate a frame currently yeah and currently that's the that's the thing it'll be hard to draw on it while it's moving as yeah, well yeah. so uh, so that you're going to you're going to oftentimes stop you know while it's working anyway right. um, but you can hit play and get to where you want and, and you can have multiple annotations because what you're really going to look at right is your, where your your hips are or where your you know your center okay. of gravity is um, where your shoulders are your the extension out those types of things are going to be things you want to say well look at how you're not pulling all the way out or your hand you know your thumb is in like this or you know all those all those little <laughs> things <laughs> you could in a very primitive way sort of do this if you had a camera a video camera even on a smartphone and a, and a tablet like let's say an iPad with a pencil he could watch the video, record him watching the video, stop, scrub, yep. annotate it with a pen, and just record a video of him, of the sensei going through all of that, and then send a video back. Yes, but it'd be kind of a, a, a just, primitive way of doing it. Yeah, you could definitely do it without any. You could definitely grab that and, and kind of draw on it. Yeah. You're right. A surface would would do it as well. Uh, the the nice thing about this is you just upload the video and you say everyone. I kind of like that. It. It's really. I kind of like that. It's it works simple. super super yeah. smooth. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things that when I first when it first came out, I was like, I don't really get it. And now, I mean, we use it for every every project. No, just because I'm curious. When you do the annotations that you do, you still do those? those? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I took a little time off. What do you I, call that? Uh, it's called the teardown. It's on it's on the, it's on our Pixel Core channel on uh, YouTube, and uh, I. Uh, uh, what happened was I, I I'm I'll play, a little I'll rough. play a little bit. Of I it complain too. a lot when I watch TV, and this someone is, said you should record. This that. is why you don't want to sit one. down next to we Alex. Have an open animation. Now, what we're trying to do is get to this master frame. This news. is the master frame here. This is where you want. And this everything is exactly. So what you, do is you set this as a keyframe, and then you and it's a very fairly straightforward. You set that keyframe, and then you back up. And you set all your keyframes. So Alex you know, all talking your about how they do here. the graphics. This is up yeah, here. Yeah, so I'm talking about the, uh, the idea was not so much to complain to completely, but uh, but also talk about how it works. So you set um, those up, and, uh, and you set those keyframes. And I think there's part here where I complain about their. Where you'll see where I get kind of. It gets snarky. This is this is it. 
if you get that, you know, those long polygons in there, you're going to end up with aliasing, which Look is exactly howling. what you see here. <laughs> and the best way to fix that is to fix the geometry and then render it again. Nobody ever saw it. <laughs> so close. So, um, so now uh, let's move forward with these, uh, this basic animation here. So this is, this is exactly, in a different field, exactly what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. what do you use to do this? I mean, it's, it's a lot of Telestrator, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of hardware that I built from scratch yeah. to, to make yeah. that work. Yeah. Um, it, it does a lot of other things, and we're in the middle of uh, writing the patents, so I can't talk oh! about it on the show. <laughs> so anyway, so, but, uh, but anyway, but, it's, uh, uh, but, right now, but that version is just a Telestrator, and, but it, it's a homemade Telestrator for that. I'm just trying to think if there's any other... You know, I use it all the time when I use my Surface Studio. I can capture a frame and annotate it. And I, that's a really nice feature. I think the Surface does a lot of great things, you know, um, with that. It's, it is, uh, it's just a matter of where the hardware is. You yeah. know, the, the nice thing about doing something on the web um, is that you this seems like the you easiest. can do it, Absolutely. and you know you can just easily anywhere you're at, you can just kind of open it up and work work through it. I think that, that you definitely could build hardware that was that gave you better feedback. The other thing that's going to be interesting, the, the thing that I'm interested in when I was thinking about your your question is if you matched, if you took something like uh, Oculus Medium, you know, uh, and you had motion capture, which will eventually the motion capture suits the the um, especially exten um, extends, I think. Uh, these motion capture suits that you put on, you could theoretically be watching your instructor do the do the moves, and then you can you could do them, and the, mar and the, and the martial art your instructor could put a, your headset on, and literally in 3D be drawing the you know drawing the correction, you know, and drawing the lines of where you want to go, and so on and so forth. And I think that uh, that may sound really out there right now, but I think we're probably less than five years from someone, you know, doing that. It feels like this is a kind of collaboration you're going to see a lot more of. This is a really great way to do teaching and instructing. And I think this is where AR and VR are going to be really, really oh, interesting. Oh, imagine you know, that. that's the, yeah. you know, I think that that's yeah. the, the, the piece where we really start to, especially as the headsets get more sleek and less bulky, that you could wear them while you're doing a, doing a form. You know, you could and be see. able to, you know, do that, there'd be a yeah. lot more that could yeah. be done. So uh, We've already started playing with... Um, with a little bit of markerless motion capture, a little bit, but wow. the the inexpensive hardware that you can get, uh, it's just not quite there yet. And then the software to really do it is kind of out of my price range right now. So, but uh, I played around with it a little bit, just using um, Xbox and Sony cameras. Yeah, we we brought my my cousin is a fifth degree uh, black belt in Um Yung Do, and um, and he uh, came out and we we. A pretty big motion capture system. We put it. We had him do it, and it's just amazing. Just to get it on. Just to, just to capture it. Yeah. yeah, and it was yeah. and it was just amazing to. You, the, what's interesting is is that it captures so much detail that, um, uh, and we bought the motion capture system to exercise motion capture. You know, and it tells you like where those hips are, which makes all the difference. You know, um, whether you're doing an exercise or a martial arts move, um, where are your hips? Where is your your, your mass? And you can see all of that. And um, and then when you start to we we, we did. The, a piece where we took the markers and we just started doing traces, you know, where it just leaves a line, <laughs> and, it, and it just becomes you, you suddenly becomes this, this huge motion. And yeah. It's beautiful when the person who does it is good at it, and horrible when people like me do it. <laughs> you know, like you know, and so it's a so. But you really see where the kinks are, and like when you do the traces, when someone's doing this, you'll see the kinks in in their motion. Where and then what, what we exactly. what you could go back and look at is when you look at those kinks you can see, oh, well, their shoulder started off a little too far this way. And you can make corrections that would be very difficult to make in uh, real time. You I know, like it, you there's stuff like this for golfers. Oh, yeah. Well, golfers. Swing there's, analysis. There's whole. Batting, batters, major colleges, league baseball. Colleges, colleges and pros, I mean, they have all kinds yeah, of these yeah. tools that are analyzing the swing, analyzing the throw, analyzing the jump. All of right. those things are being done all the time. It's amazing. So frame.io yep. sounds like... The free version. I might think be that's a good the easiest. Start. The free version is the place to start. Um, see if you like it. Uh, the base version isn't very expensive. It's a. It's just the easiest, quickest way to um, to do this. That's I don't. I couldn't cool. think of any other like no. quick and easy way to, to put yeah. it together. And that's nice. You could even do it with students because all they need is a browser. So you yep. could, you know once you've got the video, you put it in there. You can send them a link and they can look at the commentary. And you can see that it works on. You can also look at it on your phone, on nice. your iPad. So, Emery did a nice job with that. That's cool. Yeah. Glad we could now, give them a, a quick plug. question about that. If if you have that set up and you have an account, can you invite another commenter to come in, like either the student or maybe a second instructor? Yep, absolutely. So I think that the okay. way the way I think it works is that you pay to have you can have X number of collaborators per you know depending on your membership. Um, but it's all part of that. 
and I, I can't remember exactly what the what the okay. the billing is, but uh, there you go. You got ten collaborators. Uh, so the starter plan you'd have, you could put up to ten gigs of storage. You can have up to three projects at a time. Um, so remember, remember that you can. Um, uh, a project to be one video. One well, a project no, a project could be you could have a you could have a project that is all of our work together, and then you can put up to ten gigs of oh, of videos okay. up. It, as one project, so, so one, that would be enough for. But it'd be for like a class exactly, and then you yeah. can have collaborators, right. you know, up to ten collaborators at a time talking through it. So I think one one basic membership would be probably all you needed to get started, unless it really turns into a big deal, and then it would not be a That's big deal to add more. Right, Scott, you're a chemist. I'm told you work for the uh, Department yes, of Defense. I am. That yes. uh, can you explain what's going on in the periodic table of elements in your T-shirt? It doesn't okay. look good. <laughs> Well, in this particular one, uh, Chuck Norris is uh, oh. destroying the periodic table. It, that's the element Chuck Norium. So <laughs> he's 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 doubly radioactive. So <laughs> you don't want any Chuck Norium. This is good. This is a good lesson. Never get any Chuck Norium in your period. It's such a great mix of, of, of chemist and martial artist. I just I, uh, it's perfect. exactly it's perfect. your T-shirts. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right. <laughs> hey, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Thank you both very much. That's Absolutely. a great answer. I like Frame IO, and I'm yeah. glad. I remember him really very well. He was great. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. I'm glad he's got some gainful employee. Uh, next week, just kidding. <laughs> next week, Megan Maroney, our guest, our co host. Let's uh, see how you can ask her a question on the show. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. We have the mailbag. We're going to wrap things up in just a little bit. But first, Jason Howell with some must-have travel gadgets. We're in the thickest summer, and often that means hitting the road on our way to the many adventures that await us. In fact, that's where I'm at right now. Well, actually, I recorded this before my road trip, but at this very moment when you're watching it, I'm camping in the wilderness with my family. And just because we're camping doesn't mean we left technology back at home. We put technology to work for us this road trip with a few key gadgets that I'm going to show off right now. First, what do you do when your car stereo doesn't work anymore like the one in my old Subaru? You either pay to get it replaced or you get lazy, like I do. Matt Kinney heard me lamenting about my car stereo woes on All About Android recently and pointed me towards the Anchor Rove Smart Charge Car Kit for $29.99. I've been really impressed with the quality of the FM transmission on this. Uh, there's a feature in the companion app that actually boosts the signal and it makes a very noticeable difference in the quality of the sound. Even better is the onboard Bluetooth 4.2 receiver for wireless audio transmission. There are a few hardware controls on its face for doing things like answering the phone, skipping tracks, that kind of stuff while you're driving, plus a digital readout so you know which station to tune to your radio. And the companion app makes station selection very straightforward. There are two USB charging ports on top that support Anchor's PowerIQ 2.0 technology. It basically detects and outputs the proper voltage for a given connected device, all the way up to 2.4 amps of charge, which is enough for many modern smartphones, though my Pixel 2 XL would totally love to have this with a USB power delivery. There's an onboard microphone for taking calls and an auxiliary out port for lining this directly into your car stereo if it isn't broken like mine is. After listening to podcasts through my phone's car speaker in the car for nearly two years, this new setup is a dream. Now, when I'm camping, I often wish we had some way to power up a device that requires DC power. Sure, I have battery banks that can jump my car and provide my mobile devices with juice, but portable DC power is a different story. Well, Megan Maroney loaned me this the Sabre power bank for my trip. It's a large and in charge battery stick that basically puts my power needs to bed. First, it's huge, almost a foot long and 2.2 pounds heavy. In other words, if a bear attacks, I might actually have a chance. But beyond its battle performance, all that girth makes it super rugged and ready for the elements. It offers 24,000 milliamp hours of capacity, two USB charging ports with varying degrees of output up to 2.5 amps, a speedy USB-C charging port, and for maximum utility on the other end, and the thing I really love, an AC outlet, which means you can basically plug anything in there and get power for it. On top of that, the DC input charger takes only two hours to restore the Sabre to its full charging potential. The sucker is loaded, but it's a little pricey at $299. 
Finally, this one's a few years old, but it's a staple on our camping trips. It's the Bose SoundLink Mini Bluetooth Speaker 2. I'm a sucker for Bose products, and this little guy is no different. It's a small form factor Bluetooth speaker pair encased in a nice, rugged aluminum body that withstands dust and dirt nicely. It weighs around 1.5 pounds, which I appreciate because portable Bluetooth speakers often feel kind of cheap and hollow. This feels tight and substantial by comparison. For its small size, music fills the campsite incredibly well. It's perfect for my girls' post-dinner dance shows in front of the campfire. It does have a 3.5 millimeter jack for analog audio input, but the Bluetooth works great for wirelessly connecting up to two devices at once with a total of eight devices that can actually be stored in memory. Now the buttons on top control power, volume, um, Bluetooth toggling of, of course, and then there's an included multifunction button in the center that does things like pausing audio, uh, taking a call via your reception, and a whole lot more. And it charges via mini USB and not some proprietary plug. The Bose SoundLink Mini 2 costs $179.95 right now. That's actually down from $200. Anyways, happy travels this summer and maybe I'll see you on the road. If not, you can see me on All About Android, Tech News Weekly, Triangulation, and many more shows here on twit.tv. Thank you, Jason Howell. You catch Jason every Thursday on Tech News Weekly, and of course, every Tuesday in All About Android. I didn't mention this Impossible Ball has a Apple TV app, so this would be a fun thing as a party game. You could put up on your TV and play the games. And eventually break your TV. Yes, throw That's it how really that hard at your yeah, TV. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, you asked, of course, the obvious question for you. Does it have an API? And uh, they say they don't have an API yet. There's no way you can write games for it, but they're considering it. So if you're interested, you should email. If they're, if they're watching, you're nuts. Like ha this would be huge. You wouldn't have to write all the games anymore, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting idea. Now the next thing to do is to do a, put a Raspberry Pi in some in a ball <laughs> inside of a ball inside and of a ball right, yeah. and see if you can duplicate the functionality. I bet you could. You. I don't think you need to put the Raspberry Pi inside. I think you just need the. You know the, the the various sensors. You see the sensors and, and Bluetooth. some way of communicating. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm sure it would cost more than hundred dollars to figure it out, though. What if we made martial arts gloves and boots? Well, I think that the the idea of quantizing all these kinds of things is going to be it's quantizing fun. reality it's is fun. the future. Yeah. You know, like it's it's been yeah. the future for a long time. You know, we've thought that's what, but but figuring that out, I think is uh, is going to be really exciting. You know, as we start to see it. Um, you could change whole games. If you think about right. the game of golf, if you had all this AR and all kinds of right. other things, you could have people on the golf course playing a game that wasn't even the, ga you know, the game that we know of as golf because their, their, their balls are being tracked and their swings right. are being tracked and they could be doing something completely different. It could change. You know, it's, uh, those are just, that's just one example Actually, of many. That's, something, that's the lesson from this right away is you could take something as simple as a ball and exactly. have a dozen different things, challenges, things to do that are Which hard. Which we, we always did. We, we always right. had fun things that we did right. with the ball, but now it's something that's... the ball over the wire or whatever. But it, it, yeah. yeah, it adds all this extra over data to it. Uh, that is going to be the theme of this show was quantizing the physical world. Yep. That's what this was about. Let's get our uh, mailbag in here, and we're going to let Tony do the honors. Tony teaches uh, video at... San Leandro High School. And has a setup that is better than ours. I'm infinitely jealous. I, didn't, I just said it was great. I didn't say it was better than... Tricasters, cameras. Those are lucky uh, high school kids. That's a public school? That's really awesome. How do you get all the gear? Um, just Alex Lindsay. Nice. Grants, That's know, great, Tony. Yeah. And a lot of hard work. Some, yeah. You know, some, and success. It turns out if you're successful, I mean, I, I watch what the kids do, and it's just amazing. You know, really it's just neat. a really great, great environment. Yeah. Yeah, the kids are lucky if they get a teacher like you. That's yeah. great. Pick an email, any email. All right. This is the final portion of the show, which right. we answer email questions. You may start, Mr. L. Uh, so, this is from uh, Ryan. Oh, Ryan Ewell. <laughs> do you know him? Yeah, yes. Um, oh. uh, so... Um, uh, self-directed uh, self -directed learning is uh, the best way to supplement any education when it comes to multimedia and specifically video. What sites, resources, or people do you recommend following, joining, participating in as someone tries to increase their knowledge, skills, proficiency on their own? This is in response to a tweet you put out a couple I did. I tweeted. I, I was like, hey, I'm going to be on uh, on the new screensavers. What do you, what do you got? So anyway, so, um, so anyway, the... The, the go-to ones for me are 
are uh, so lynda.com is kind of a, a gimme. Now it's Microsoft Learning, but it's Microsoft they, Learning, they but it's it. yeah. but but they they continue to put out just a lot of really a lot stuff. of good content. Yeah. It's going to cover a lot of things for twenty five bucks. I think it's still twenty five bucks a month. It's yeah. it's like a, it's a no brainer. Um, and we know and so, a lot of instructors. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. It's LinkedIn Learning, owned by Microsoft. Yeah. Right, and um, and then I also uh, for I do a lot of Cinema 4D stuff. So Cineversity is a great tool for learning when you're doing 3D. If you're using Cinema 4D, it's only Cinema 4D, but it's a great uh, tool for that. Yeah. Um, then there's also for the higher end stuff. There's FX PhD um, that is a, a place where you can take some of the classes. Those are the places that. And then after that, it's just YouTube. You know, like you, you, you it's amazing what you can search. And somebody has thought of it. When I when I tried to figure out, um, you know, when I got really got into PhotoScan, which is this photogrammetry that we were talking about earlier, I spent hours just going through. Now, you know, they're not perfect, you know, as far as the the quality of, of all of the videos. But you get, oh right, that's a new tool that I can use. And so a lot of it is still nugging through it. I don't think that we're at a point where, you know, I think the problem right now with video instruction and self-driven pieces is the, the what I would call the content density. You know, how much you get per second while you're watching it is very low. You know, because people don't have a lot of budget. But that's slowly increasing. Um, I think that you're watching lynda.com, for instance, just slowly turn that dial. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, where they now have little studio mm -hmm. stuff and they're not, it's not all just screen captures, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so it, it is going to get better. Um, I think that one of the things that we're hoping to do later this year is we started doing some stuff with the Pixel Core again, you know, on Patreon, and uh, we're going to continue on a couple different platforms to do more challenge-based stuff. Like I'm going to tell every, you know, everybody. I like goes, that. I think that it's really hard to just kind of watch. Right. You know, you, you what I, for me, what I'm trying to, you know, what we're working on, what we've been trying to formulate, starting and stopping formulating right now, is I'm going to give you a couple videos, and I'm going to then challenge you to do something, and then we're all going to have a live discussion. So take the live, uh, you know, the live stuff that we do a lot of. And let's have a live discussion and talk, look at people, what people did, answer their questions, have a discussion with them. But I think those components, you know, of having something to work on um, and then having your questions answered and having some videos that kind of help you along the way are kind of the, the key components that I think are there that I don't see anybody doing really well. So uh, we're hoping to do a little bit more of it on our own. But, but I think that as far as the ones that are out there, I think that... Um, you know, lynda.com is still the kind of the, the go-to for, for a lot of the, the video stuff. You nailed it. I mean, there's really no lack of information. Right. And my son has taught himself how to cook from YouTube videos. Right. But it is the quality, not only the quality of information, but the quality of the delivery varies widely. And the quality of engaging you varies widely. I do think, and I, want, I think you should take a look at, there are uh, online MOOCs, multi massively online mm -hmm. educational things <laughs> that have done a pretty good job. I've been taking a, a series of courses in computer programming from uh, a MOOC created by Harvard and MIT called EDX. It's edx.org. Mm -hmm. so you can take the classes for free. Right. It's really a, a magical time for a learner now. I mean, right. if you want to learn something, really the challenge is not finding stuff where you can learn this, it's finding stuff where it's done well. EDX has some, and what they've mastered is exactly what you uh, uh, mentioned, which is the mix of instruction to hands-on. Right. And if you're, if you're watching videos on coding or Blender or 3D animation and you're not doing it, you're really not learning it. You're learning, you're absorbing a lot of stuff, but you're not learning how to do it. You've got to do it. So they have short, very short, three or four minute, at least the case, of course, I'm taking, three or four minute videos with an instructor who talks about stuff. He will sometimes pause in the video because you have an interactive programming environment that goes along with the course and say, all right, I want you to do the next two in this starter assignment that we've given you, and then press play to continue on. Or he'll stop the video, there'll be quizzes, they have online quizzes, and they even have projects and timed tests. So they have used a lot of the different tools yep. to get you working. I spent two or three weeks on the final project, much more time probably than a, I would have in college, I would have spent a couple of hours, right. but I had the luxury because it's a self-paced learning experience to really spend some time on it. And I think I learned more because of that yeah, but you have to be motivated to do it. Yeah, and I think that I think that the finding a way to kind of tie everybody in socially so that they're talking to each other. That's another thing to they the do. Instructor. They have a forum. Right. The instructor will do office hours in which he'll answer questions on video, but they also have a forum that peers can say, right. oh, "Boy, this was a hard one. Did you? How did you figure this out?" And that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's, that's been really great. And, and it's going to keep getting 
keep getting better. One thing they have to do, though, in there is say, you could get answers by going outside the course. We ask that you don't. You know, you could Google it. We ask that you don't because we want you to learn how to do it yourself. We want you to learn it within the framework of the course. So while you could probably solve this problem by Googling it, please don't. Please, right. please spend some time thinking about it. And that really is discipline on the learner's part. The discipline to keep doing it, to kind of focus. Uh, but if you can learn how to do that, man, the world is your oyster. Well, and, and thinking about, to me, I mean, how I've learned everything is projects. You know, yeah. I have a... Doing it. I told you that I could do multi, multi-cam video for Twit, <laughs> and, uh, for, and uh, I had no idea. And so then I figured it out. You know, and so it, 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 was, it was painful. So, so the trick is promise something to somebody... <laughs> That you exactly. don't know how to do. That you don't know how to do. And then you figure it out. Yeah, you know, that's a, and, but, you know, a lot of the, you know, I'm learning, uh, um, I'm digging much deeper into Arduino because I have a, you know, I have a pump that I'm trying to control with my phone. And You've it just become, it it. became this project. The pump yeah. was proprietary, so now I have to watch the traffic, you know, between its proprietary tool and, and this so I can figure out what, what, what's, what's going on. And so I'm learning all this stuff about pumps and about Arduino and about everything else because I have a project. And so the thing is, and, and you know, every... Uh, I, I've, one of the things we say internally is like when we're trying to think about what to do next is every, every problem is a product, but every problem is also a project. You know, so if there's something you're frustrated about, figure out a way to fix it and then you, with technology and, or with video or with whatever. Yeah, and, but you know, you're unique in that respect. You have that mindset. You've learned so much because you do take that as a challenge and then you bite into it and you learn it and you solve it. And fail often. And, but you're not typical. I think there are a lot of people who would just say, yeah, it's too hard and not do it. So well, and, and, and the, the key is, is is to be okay with. I have a lot of it's undone okay if projects. It doesn't work. I have a lot of undone projects. I I, I, I kind of go down that path. I learn a yeah. couple things, yeah. and then I decided that it was too steep for right now. I'll come back to it. Yeah. Some projects I start on and off for years. You know, it's not something that if if I'm not admittedly if I'm not making money with it, I don't. Right. If I'm making money with it, then I figure it out and end it. You know, <laughs> like make sure it works. Right. Uh, but if it's my personal projects, take a long right. time because I'm not. Right. You know, I just kind of fiddle with them, but they but they allow me to think through it, and then I do a bunch of searching, and then I watch a bunch of videos, and and uh, ask people that are smarter than me. You know, I think a thing. lot of the people who watch our shows are that kind of person. Yep. But I but I do think that if you are that kind of person, you live in a, a golden age right now of learning. Oh, this yeah. is the best time to be if you're a good learner and a self starter. Boy, is what a great time! I remember learning programming when I was. You know, ten. Yeah. And there were in, in 1980, there was nothing. Right. I mean, you, there was a handful of magazines, and you'd buy the magazine, and right. then learning how to type code it was, in. You'd sit there and type in your 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 bit, and all you're look learning at it is and, the pain of typing things in. Exactly. And of typos. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now you've got Khan Academy, you've got iTunes University, you've got a dozen different ways to learn online. You've got commercial entities like uh, LinkedIn Learning. Yep. There really is an endless yeah supply. This is from uh, K Jewett Two from the Twitter. I think this is for you, too. In your daily work, Alex Lindsay. Hi, K. Jewett. Uh, you are, are you always trying new apps, or do you stay with the same proven standard apps? And if so, what are the five you use most often? Well, I, Great question, K. Thank yeah, you. It's, it's a good question. I, I think I'm almost constantly testing new apps. That's, a, that's an occupational some... hazard for people like us. Yeah. Certainly, if we're covering apps, when you do Mac Break Weekly, you always want to have a new pick of the week. And yeah. that, so there's an occupational hazard that really makes us a little different than and, a normal person. And it's, it's apps, it's hardware, it's, yeah. you know, I'm constantly, you know... Uh, I think it's fun. No, I mean, I do too. And I, and I, and it's I, not normal. And I watch someone post something or I watch, or, or someone will recommend something and I immediately right. download it and start playing That's with it. That's actually so great on Mac Break Weekly, because invariably, during our recommendations at the end, I'll buy whatever it is. You'll install yeah. whatever it is. We're all, uh, that's you can the most watch expensive everybody part of the doing show that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Let me try that. Yeah. And I think it's that spirit, though, is a good spirit. I think that's the kind of thing you... you the, and it's and again, when we talk about golden age, this is the golden age to have that. It used to be you have to buy it. You pay $600 right. for it or $3,000 It's amazing. It or now you download the demo, and the demo works perfectly. Or I mean, you buy a $5 app, and if it didn't exactly. work great, it's five bucks. It's a coffee. It was world. a bad coffee. You yeah, know, it, yeah. It, it, and so I think definitely on the phone, and even to some degree, you know, and, and part of what's made that work is this kind of, uh, at least on the, on the Apple side, the, the sandbox thing where they really can know that you're actually buying it, you know, to some degree, has made it easier to charge less, you right. know, for it. Because right. a lot of times you're taking into account you know, all, you know, all the people that weren't paying for it, you know. And uh, so I think that uh, we're all benefiting from that to some degree. I uh, there's definitely apps that I use a lot. What are the f give me five that you have to have? Uh, the 
Interestingly, the one I was trying to think of ones, and one that I don't think of as an app that I use all the time, but the one that I pay attention to a lot is iStat Menu. Um, I don't know if you on your Mac and on my Mac. iStat is this thing that I, I every computer. I'm like, if, if we have a computer that doesn't have it, I'm like, why didn't we have iStat on here? Because uh, it, if you have a problem, it tells you, oh, it's still transferring data, or what's going on with my CPU, or it what's shows going on in CPU activity, temperature, drive, and I/O activity. It even has the weather. It, yeah. And it all goes in the, your your menu bar at the top yeah. of the screen. I use it on my i I only program only one I use it on is iMac Pro because I always want to know. I bought ten cores. Are any of them actually working? Right. Most of the time. Well, and I know so that no. if I like if I'm running compressor, if it doesn't run full tilt, oh, right. I forgot to turn What's on wrong? the, the yeah. instancing, yeah. and you know, there's a whole bunch of things that I can I can look at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other another one that I mean, Photoshop Good program. I like it. I, I I've played with a lot of other programs. I'm still playing with them, but Photoshop is still. You know, I'm an old fogey when it comes to editing software, so Photoshop is still a... Is there anything you see that's a competitor out there? Pixelmator? I think that uh, Pixelmator and Affinity... Affinity um, is amazing. Is real, uh, th those are great contenders. Um, yeah. Affinity I use because when I shoot 360 photos, Affinity lets you um, go into a live view, look down where your tripod was, and paint it out with a right. clone tool without, you know, with, where you can actually see the details. Right. And so, um, and that is the, it's kind of the, um, the only thing I know to do that really easily. Although I think you can now do it in Final Cut, which is another one that I use probably um, almost every day is Final Cut. As far as, you know, I cut all my little videos or anything I'm, you know, cutting up, it's all being done in Final Cut. Nice. Um, as far as the editing goes, notes, we were talking about this on Mac Break. Um, the, the, just the plain comes with the Mac Cost nothing Apple Notes program. My, li my life like lives inside. Because here's the thing is that I don't want to install a bunch of apps. I don't want right. to do it like what it works on every device. Yeah. You know, Syncs. I, it, it's it, like as soon as I write it, I can, I can share it. So I sh like if, if I do a checklist, hey, I, I'll tell, I'll tell uh, my wife that I'm, I'm going to go to the market. Uh, do you, what do you, what do you need? And what I'll do is I'll share right. a notes Right. thing, just like you would share a Google Doc. Right. And then she starts adding stuff that she wants, and it's in the checklist It's great form if you're all Apple, iPhone, iPad, Macintosh. Right. It doesn't go outside of that universe. Google Keep does. Right. It does much of the same thing, but, you know, it doesn't come with it. I think, I, I think that because my world is very uh, segmented, so we use Linux boxes for all of our encoding. Right. Um, and our stitching for 360. But we you use, don't need notes on that. No, and, and I, don't, right. I, I don't even look inside of it. I just, you right. know, and then we use Windows for very heavy lifting graphics, and I'm not usually, but my day-to-day day -day life you sit in front of lives Apple inside product. of an Apple yep. product. Yep. You know. yep. Well, thank you, Alex Lindsay. It's always a pleasure to have you it's here. It's great to be here. A-L-E-X-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y on Twitter. That's the best way to keep up with what Alex is up to, uh, at Alex Lindsay. And uh, unlike the rest of us, his follower count's always going up. Just, but just barely. Just a little bit of a time. <laughs> Mine's been going down like 500 a month every month. Mine goes and up I, by like two every I month. I want to do an A-B experiment, like see if I, po if I post, I, generally it goes up if I post nothing. The more I post, the more I lose people. So, so the, that's because you get my, you upset people. My advice I mean, it's, it's Twitter. I bet it's true for everybody. My advice: you want to succeed on Twitter, say nothing. <laughs> Just don't use Twitter. <laughs> but you have to. You have to. Uh, uh, it's. It's. It'll be that one post though that gets shared over know, and over and over again. That's that what. That's what. Point. Then everyone yeah. goes. Oh, I'm going to follow that person. Uh, we do. Ma Alex is a regular on Mac Break Week. He's not here every week because he's always working. But if he's here, it's it's always a lot of fun. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that would be 1800 UTC. And of course, the new Screensavers is uh, here every uh, Saturday afternoon, about uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. Uh, either of those shows, in fact, all of our shows are streamed live during the production phase. You're not going to see the finished product, but you're going to see us making the sausage, as it were, and you can do that at uh, watching live at our website, twit.tv slash live. We have links to all the different streams. If you want to watch live on a Roku or an Apple TV, probably the easiest thing to do, there are actually quite a few Apple TV apps. The Roku app no longer uh, works because Roku changed their API and we're too cheap to write it again. So you can always use YouTube. We're streaming live on YouTube. Ustream, Twitch. Uh, and now the new Mixer app on many platforms. You can just look for Twit and you'll find our live stream. If you are watching the live stream, please join us in the chat room. That's where the community hangs out. That's irc.twit.tv. We'd also love having you in studio. We had a great studio audience today. If you want to join us in the studio, all you have to do is email tickets at twit.tv. There's no charge for the tickets. We just like to know ahead of time how many people 
are going to be here. Tickets at twit.tv. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, that'll give you some idea of what's coming up in the week ahead. Jerry puts that together every Sunday. Uh, you just go to twit.tv slash newsletter and subscribe. Twit.tv slash store if you want to buy merch. Um, what else? For this show, if you want to download copies after the fact, twit.tv slash NSS for new screen savers or search for new screen savers in your favorite podcast app and you will find us and you can subscribe and you get audio and video the minute it's available. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the new screen savers. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yay.